Hello mountain bikers and welcome back to your favorite gear show. 2023 is almost done already, but there's just enough time left for us to bring you one more show. Last month we covered our favorite products of the year, so it's been a little longer than usual since our last regular episode, which means we have some catching up to do today. We've got a new riding pack, some shoes and some fresh new grips to talk you through in a little bit, but before we get into the reviews, time for our customary industry news roundup. You know the one, we call it a month in a minute. Only today, it's gonna have to be more like a few months in a few minutes. All right then, let's dig in. YT introduced a new version of their Jeff C trail bike with a number of changes that have made it better than ever. Head to our site to check out our full review if you want to learn more. Kotik launched the second generation of their jet with some clever geometry tweaks that aim to see less riders fall in between sizes. Privateer is also working on the second generation of their frame platform, which is slated for release in February 2024. Airdrop just launched the Edit MX and the Edit 27.5, both aimed at the rowdier end of the single crown rider spectrum. Speaking of rowdy single crown bikes, RAW just introduced the third generation of the Madonna, which they claim is the most robust, adjustable and durable bike they've ever built. If it's speed you're after, Santa Cruz just dropped the 8th generation of their World Cup winning V10 with fine-tuned kinematics and frame stiffness that will leave you well short of excuses if you're feeling slow. Forbidden has now finalized the work on their downhill frame, intriguingly named the Supernaut. This high-pivot, idler pulley-equipped beast will come in four sizes with size-specific chainstays. If you'd like to do more with less, Transition just relaunched the Trans Am Hardtail after a seven-year absence from the lineup. We don't know how long it will stay there, so get yours while supplies last. Last Bikes has redeveloped their Glen Trail Bikes and Cole Enduro Bikes with weight savings and improved durability as a result. Nukeproof has done their part to keep the youngest rippers out there happy with the introduction of the Cub Scoot and the Cub Scout in 14 and 16 inch versions. On the electrified side of mountain biking, Uno just unveiled the stunning Icky, a lightweight EMTB featuring the same geometry and kinematics as their full powered Myth. It features a 50Nm TQ motor with a 360 watt hour battery and weighs in at 18.5 kilos in size S2 with the factory build. Orange has also just released a new lightweight EMTB, the 19.5 kilo Phase Evo EPO, equipped with a 55Nm Bosch motor and a 400 watt hour battery. Reacting to current market conditions, SCORE has just announced price reductions across their 2024 lineup, ranging from 200 to 1200 US dollars, depending on the model. On the component side, it has been an interesting time for rear shocks, with Cane Creek dropping their new air-charged coil shock, the Tigon. It combines a coil and an air spring to offer more adjustability while retaining the comfort of coil. Push has also just introduced a new shock, the SV8. It shares many features with its older sibling, the 11.6, but in a simplified package that allows Push to hit a lower price point with this one. For those looking for a high-volume, gravity-oriented air shock, X-Fusion just dropped the new H3A. Opt for the HLR spec for downhill and freeride applications, or the RCP for enduro. The latter features a three-position platform to help with pedaling. If you're looking to add a splash of color to your ride, and you happen to be a fan of Mavic's iconic old D-Max rims, you'll be pleased to hear that they are back. The new rim features an extra strong sidewall and a triangular profile to better absorb heavy impacts. And of course, they're yellow. Mavic also introduced a new D-Max half-shell helmet, which is a rather more curious choice of name, given the distinctly downhill-oriented positioning of products sporting the moniker, historically. Wolf Tooth has just launched a new remote 360 dropper lever, a reiteration of a Crank Brothers design that can be activated in any direction. PNW Components has added a carbon handlebar to its Loam family of products, with variable wall thickness said to improve comfort. Liat introduced the Gravity 6.0 carbon helmet and the Velocity 4.0 X-Slow goggles earlier this year, but now they are available to purchase. The goggles lack any lower wall or foam area, which leads to much improved airflow without letting too much dust into the goggle. An interesting approach. More information and feedback from testing on our site if you want it. Acros just introduced an all-new flat pedal that combines certain design elements of two previously existing pedals. It's got a flat and wide body, a robust axle system, and should be easy to service when that time comes too. KS has jumped into the wireless dropper post game with the all-new LEV circuit. We've been impressed with this new post on the trail so far, you can head to our site if you want to check out the full review. Ceramic Speed has come up with a way to reduce the rolling resistance of a SRAM Teep type derailleur while also making your wallet much lighter, the updated OSPW X cage for Eagle transmission. Giant has developed a couple of new wheels that have been thoroughly tested by team riders riding for the brand. Choose between the Carbon TRX and the Aluminum TRA. In both cases you get a new Freehub driver with 72 points of engagement. Ergon also has a new product that has proven itself on the racetrack, the all-new GDH grip, which has been painstakingly engineered to provide more control and better grip. And to finish off this new section in style, Bergtech continues to expand its line of colorful accessories with the introduction of Superboost rear axles for the relevant pivot and evil frame models. 
Whoa, that was a lot to digest, but don't worry. We've added links to all the products mentioned in the description area below, so you can dig deeper and learn more about anything that caught your eye. Now, don't go anywhere. We're not done quite yet. Time to get into the reviews. First up, a new flat pedal shoe from Northwave, the Tail Whip Evo Eco. As you might have guessed from the name, the Tail Whip Evo Eco is the more ecologically friendly evolution of the Tail Whip Evo, a skate-style shoe designed specifically for mountain biking. The uppers are constructed from Repet, a recycled polyester fabric derived from discarded PET bottles. Northwave also made use of refoam and re-rubber for the heel cup, insole and outsole, recycled foam and rubber, respectively. For the outsole, Northwave turned to Michelin, who produced a hybrid sole composed of 26% recycled rubber blended with the fresh stuff to keep the grip and shock absorption characteristics high in this crucial area. The result is a shoe that Northwave says is produced with a 53.34% responsible impact, which represents their first step on this ecologically driven journey. When we first slipped our feet into the new tail whip, we were struck by the high level of comfort on offer. The insole is quite soft without being too spongy, and the uppers do a good job of cradling your foot without any unwanted pressure points. The midsole also offers good shock absorption, while remaining stiff enough for proper power transfer to the pedals. We've spent many days both riding and hanging out in the tail whips, with equally good results even during really long days. What about that all-important grip then? We've had good experiences with Michelin outsoles before, and this version is no exception. It seems to deliver the same kind of grip we enjoyed previously. How does it compare with the market leaders in the grip department, 510 Specialized and Fox? With pressure on the pedals, the rubber and sole pattern work well together to produce very high levels of grip that inspire confidence in most riding situations. It's when things go a little south that you notice a slight difference in surface stickiness, which is where the aforementioned best-in-class soles really stand out. Having said that, these Northwave shoes definitely work well enough for us to recommend them for pretty much any kind of riding, especially if you place a premium on comfort and shock absorption. Grips are a crucial contact point on the bike, and it's probably the one area where a very small investment can make a huge difference to your ride. Raceface knows this, and they've worked hard to deliver what they call their most advanced grip ever, the all-new Chester. The Chester grips are constructed with a soft 20A durometer rubber, which features a number of raised ridges and ribs, strategically placed to improve comfort, increase grip, and manage sweat and moisture. The grip is thicker under the palm area for extra cushioning, and there are ribs placed at different angles for different areas of the hand. Both ends of the grip are tapered to keep your hand secure while leaning the bike, and more prominent ridges run horizontally along the underside of the grip to provide extra hold when things really get rowdy. The grips are 136mm long and are available in either 31 or 34mm of diameter. On the trail, we were immediately won over by the soft rubber and the comfortable shape of the grip. This tester opted to run the 34mm version, which is his sweet spot. Good to see Raceface offering the Chester in two options to cater to different hand sizes. When we first laid eyes on the new grip, we were a little skeptical about the ribbed patterns. As per previous experience, these can sometimes produce a floaty feel under the hands, which is not to everybody's liking. These fears soon proved unfounded, as the ribs are small enough to not fold over excessively when under pressure, while still delivering a little extra breathing space and edges that grip well. The more prominent horizontal ridges make themselves felt, but not to the point of becoming a nuisance, and we soon forgot about them too. All in all, we really appreciate the shape and the comfort level offered by the new Chester, and we think they will suit a large group of riders, in particular since they are available in two sizes, which means more people are likely to be able to find one that fits their anatomy and their preferences. We've seen a lot of change in the way we carry our spares, tools and food over the past few years. With the evolution of on-bike storage and the rebirth of the hip pack, more and more riders are abandoning the classic backpack in favor of something less imposing. But what if you still want to carry your stuff on your back, albeit a little bit less of it? Evoc has your back, quite literally, with the new Hydro Pro 6. Evoc calls this pack a hydration vest, and that's a good way to describe it. Think of it as a shorter, more compact backpack, and you've got the idea. The main storage compartment has room for spares, food, first aid kit, and a windbreaker, and there's a separate compartment that holds a 1.5 liter hydration bladder. There are two large pockets on the front of the straps as well, which can hold things like energy gels, a phone and a multi-tool if you want to spread the weight around a bit. There's also an extra elastic mesh pouch around the back that can hold quite a few items if need be. The vest is designed to sit high up on your back, which leaves your whole waist area free. There are two chest straps to hold the vest in place, and there are plenty of adjustments available to ensure that you can fit the vest to your anatomy. All the straps are elasticated to help hold everything in place when things get a little rowdy. We were a little skeptical of the design when we first saw it, thinking that without a waist strap to hold it in place, the vest would start to bounce around on the trail. We needn't have worried though, as the vest is very stable in action. 
It feels pretty much like a normal backpack, only a bit lighter and less cumbersome on the back. Because it leaves the whole lower back and waist area free, you benefit from a bit more airflow in this space. Without any kind of foam back panel in place, the vest sits quite close to the body, which makes it run a bit hot, but it does have a breathable mesh that helps it avoid getting too clingy. Cargo is held in place securely, and there's even an extra elastic strap system that can be used to reduce the cargo space and compress the vest to really secure the objects inside. We also appreciate the magnetic clip, which helps store the hydration hose out of harm's way, but still easy to access for drinking. All in all, we're quite impressed by the Hydro Pro 6, and we think it provides a good solution for those who want to carry a reduced amount of gear, but don't want to run a hip pack. Okay then, that's the end of the show. We hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for taking the time to tune in. As always, don't forget to like, comment and subscribe. And until next time, happy trails and happy new year.